I'm Dan Galusha and welcome to another edition of Dan's Fishing Tales. Today we're going to be doing some finger jigging. I'm out here on this weed island and as you can see I'm finger... Whoops! There's one right there! I just got it out of my mouth! Oh, wound around or something. kind of hard getting them down in this stuff. Yeah. Come on. Come on, Jay. Oh, this is a nice bass. Real nice. Oh, I hate picking them up by a line like this. Ah, good fish. Good fish to start with. Hey, real happy about that. He's, oh, I don't know, about 17 inch bass, I guess. Not too bad, but we're going to be talking about finger jigging, so get him back in the water. As I said, I'm going to be talking to you about finger jigging. Now, I've done this a lot, and I've, I've done a video before on how I do it, but evidently some people are had a few more questions, such as how did I start doing it, and why did I start doing it? Well, it started with monofilament line, actually. And what I was doing was my spinning reel like this. As I was reeling in, because I was using this particular jig, this is why I was using it. This is a two inch power minnow on a bee fishing jig head. In fact, this one is a 332nd ounce, so I'm using very light stuff. Bringing it in, I was having a tremendous amount of line twist on the retrieve. So I took my fingers, just like this, and I pinched the line to hold it, and I jig it this way. Well, one day, I thought, well, I'm going to put a little bit more tension on it by just taking one finger, like this. By doing that, I reeled it, I noticed the rod tip was bouncing, and the little jig, once I got it up in the clear water and closer, I could see, hey, this has really got a rhythm. And it had a, a constant rhythm. Not the type that you'd be putting on like this, but actual constant rhythm with it hitting your finger as this spool comes around and hits your line. Then I started thinking about something else. What sort of line might be better than monofilament line? You can use monofilament line, no problem. I come across with nanofill. And this nanofill has just been super. I also use braided. I first used braided, a gorilla braid. But then I went with the nanofill. And that's what I've stuck with. As far as rods, now this is a real trick. You have to have something that's got a good tip action to it. And I would like to work with a rod company to develop a rod for finger jigging. But the best ones I've actually found are the Shakespeare Agilities. And I've been using the uh, ultralight version a lot. And in fact, that fish that I just caught, that's what I caught it on. And again, this is a two inch minnow. That what I caught that fish on is a four inch, what they call a little killer. This is put out by natural four inch baits. And I'm using a heavier head. I've, I've got a, a, a 3 16 ounce on this one. And normally on finger jigging, that's about it. I will go up to quarter, but very, very rarely. It's mainly the 3 16 ounce on down. Uh, jig heads, like I said, the kit is very, very basic. I mean, if you want just a basic finger jigging kit, your colors of lures are anything that is kind of a natural forage. Uh, such as these. Now this particular one's called an Emerald Shiner and it's the little two inch minnow which is, as I said, that's what started it all. Uh, another thing is the twitch tail. Now this is the smelt color. I really like that smelt color and uh, that's a, a three inch twinch tail and I'll also use the three inch power minnow in the same type of color. Now the natural forage bait is this one which I showed you. That's what I caught the fish on and that's what I've been having quite a few hits on there. And what's nice about this is it already contains one of the other extra components that I use in finger jigging. And that's kicking bass attractant. Uh, it's already in this, but I will also add some. And this is the new Java, by the way. And that Java's worked real well, but I like the Anna Shad, too. There's a lot of others, uh, crawfish, that sort of thing. But the crawfish, I might use that more for a regular jig. Now, what we're talking about regular jig, 
you can finger jig with anything that is jigging. And one of the lures that I have used is a uh, Blitz finesse jig. And I'll put one of these smaller minnows on the back of that and I'll swim that along in an area that you would normally be doing a spinner bait. And I'll tell you, that thing can just be absolute dynamite at times. And as I said, jig hits, there's not a whole lot to them. I mean, this is it right here. There's the jig hits. You can see them right here and up here, you'll notice these are uh, put out by Blakemore. Those are the Casey's heads, and I'll use those too. That's not the basic kit. This is just what I've added to it because it has the blade, which adds something a little bit extra to that, but it still has that jumping. And in that way, what you can do is you can stop finger jigging for a little bit, maybe pull along, let it drop, and let that blade flutter. So that's a little bit different. And I said, that's not the basic kit. The basic kit are these bee fish and jig heads right here. And also there's some others that I've put in here that are around heads that are, are put out by Berkeley but mainly it's these they are made different as you can see right here see that little got that little catch right there it's not the lead type and I like those much much better than having a lead uh, collar to it it's just a wire like that and I'll tell you that thing is just really really good I, I like it and like I said that's my basic kit there's not much to this uh, and you can get into finger jigging and while we're talking about it why don't I get out there and start doing a little bit more fishing and maybe I can catch some more and I might switch to some of these others but right now that little killer is doing great We're along with the kicking bass and let's give it a try. kind of show it because it'll flatten out kind of like on a wing, wing dam along the river where you see it ahead of time when you got the current running across the same thing here and that's what I'm seeing on. so uh, I'm trying to get out of that and actually the wind is helping me because the distance but with this ultralight type of a rod and a 3 16th ounce jig head I can cast out there a long way Let that set down for a bit. Oh, there was a hit right there. slightly it'll be a lighter hit the rod tip won't jump quite as hard and so you're controlling how much jump you want to that actually just by this finger and how far down you want to stick it and just go back and forth like this see if we're at clear down here it's a real hard hit but up here it's a light one so I will vary that just to see what happens Same way with the speed. I'll vary the speed. The faster I reel it, the more that tip is boink, 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 like that. But right now, 
now it seems like they like it a little bit slower so that it's more of a thump, thump, thump. One of the things that I'll do is I'll lower the rod tip like this and start bringing it along. It makes it different than up in the air. And you got, oops, there's one right there. Oh, this is, this is a pretty good fish. Yeah, nice fish. Let's hope we can get him in. Oh yeah. Good fish. Real nice. Trying to land them under this stuff. Oh, yeah. There. There's a nice fish. And he re ate that thing. He's not hooked that deep. It's just that he ate it. Hands are cold. There we go. It's not a bad fish. Like I said, it's again on the little killer, that little natural forage bait killer. It, that's what I did. Finger jigger. As I said, I lowered the rod tip and that worked. Yeah, that worked out real good. I think it's starting to get a little torn up. Put some more kicking bass on it. Try that again. Uh, that, uh, seems like it works pretty doggone good. But, yeah, it's starting to tear right there. You can see it's up here towards the front, but yeah, they're pretty tough baits. But when you start having some bigger fish like that chewing on them, they, they do have a tendency. But as I said, before the fish interrupted, uh, if I leave the rod tip up high like this, there's a different sort of a bounce to it. When I put it down, it's jigging it more this way, and so the other way it's coming up and down this way, the, this way it still is, but it's coming along this way. I uh, think I'm getting through <laughs> what I'm meaning to say. But, uh, so you can actually, there's a lot of things you can vary with. Your finger, the position of the rod, uh, just, you have to experiment with it. But it's a very, very simple system, as you can see, and it works. Got another one. Thank. All right, yeah. Yep, yep, sure have. I wasn't sure if it was weeds or if it was fish. Yeah, I think he's swimming at me. I don't know where he's at. Oh, he's off. Well, that's what happened. Something that I haven't really talked about is the uh, line. I mean, I mentioned the fact that I use the nanofill, uh, but I use certain pound tests, and I use six, eight, ten, and twelve pound tests, with the primary one being eight. Now, this particular one is a ten, and you'll also see that it is the bright yellow color. But the one that I prefer is the green. There's a dark green in it. And I, I really do like that one the best of all. Like I said, if I had my choice of one of the nanofills, it would be 8 pound test, dark green. Uh, I'll go to the 10. I, one reason I got 10 on this is if I'm going to be fishing the heavier one, I might go to that. Also, if I go to the medium agility rod rather than the ultralight like this, I'll probably use a 10 or a 12 pound test. You can 
the basic kit is what we've been talking about, but you can use just about anything that you have a tail action. I've used a four inch worm, like a natural four inch bait R worm. It's just a four inch finesse worm, and you got tail action. You can use something like that. And as I mentioned, the Blitz finesse jig, put the little minnow body on there, that works fine too. Uh, so pretty much anything, but as I said, what I've been telling you about is the basic kit. And uh, and it worked fine. I mean, you'll catch fish doing that. As you can see, it's a very, very simple technique. And I'm going to try to catch a few more fish out here and see what we can do. This one I got way out there. Whoa! Better fish than I think, <laughs> or that I thought, I should say. I was trying to, oh yeah. Decent fish, I mean, nothing huge, but hey, I'm not gonna kick. I let it go way down this time. I just hate landing fish, picking them up by the line like that. That's the worst way you can do them. It's a good way to lose fish. But when you got a shoreline like this, it's a little hard to get down there. Like I said, not too bad of a fish. I'm not going to kick. As they say, any bass is a good bass. Get a little bit more uh, kicking bass fish for you on there. Attractant, whatever you want to call it. Put that on. Get back out there. Like I said, what I'm doing is I'm finding that as the day progresses, they seem like they're they're going down and holding tighter the weeds as, as they would with this front. I mean, we got wind out of the east. And, it's cold, it's <laughs> no doubt about it. Now I just let it sit there. I just let it go down and then start bringing it in. And I'm, I'm hitting a lot of weeds this way, but uh, it seems like that's where they're at. I know I'm talking about finger jigging, but uh, I couldn't help but try a blitz blade in these conditions. And I've got one on, on a blitz blade, a good one. I, I just had to, had to give it a try. And I got a good fish here. I don't know what I got. He's retaking drag, whatever he is. I got a feeling this isn't a bass. And if it is a bass, it's a doggone big one. Now this, this can't be a bass. This is really a big fish. He says it's on a blitz blade, whatever I got. Definitely not a bass. <laughs> no way. 
Well, huge grass carp. Huge grass carp. I just seen him. Well, I just had to pick up the blade, didn't I? so that all of you can see this. I'm going to try to get the camera down here. There. There, you can see the size of this group. He's a big thing. But I'm going to try to get that out of there. Now you can see what I've been trying to do. And I'm going to try to get this off of him. Somehow. Hopefully, without me going in. Well, I lost my blade, and it's starting to rain besides. <laughs> oh boy, what a day, huh? I want to pick up my other rod and start finger jigging again. Windier and rainier. <laughs> Let's hope this isn't another big grass carp, right? I don't think so. Nope, got a bass. Decent one, too. bass at all. You know, we're going to put him back in. I've lost a few today. Uh, trying to get the camera on or whatever, but I've got a few too. And as you can see, finger jigging does work. Uh, and I'm going to tie that back on. But it's starting to rain. It's getting windier. It's getting later in the day. 
it might be a good time to just wrap it up on a nice fish like that. So, you know, get to just the basic kit like I told you on this finger jigging and, and try it out and, and you're going to see that it, it really works. It's, it's simple. Anybody can do it. There's, you know, as long as you use a spinning outfit, I, I use the uh, Fluger Supreme reel with it, or at least mine. I mean, you can use anything. And that agility rod, that's got the best tip action I've found with any of them. Uh, so, you know, just, just give it a shot. See what happens. So until next time, get out on the water and have a great day of fishing.